If you have patellar tracking disorder, then in this video, you're gonna learn five exercises to keep your knees healthy and pain-free. Hey, what's up? Coach E here from Precision Movement. And before we get into today's topic of patellar tracking disorder, I just wanted to give a shout out to all of my subscribers. We recently hit 70,000 subscribers and I just wanted to say thank you for following me. It's been awesome hearing your comments about how I've been able to help you. And let's continue on this journey to moving freely and without pain. So if you haven't subscribed, why don't you join us? Okay, so patellar tracking disorder. That's a term that's given to people who often present with knee pain and on diagnosis, it looks like their knee their kneecap, their patella, doesn't move right when they do different movements, whether it's a lunge or a squat. The typical finding is the patella tracks or moves too far laterally. It's not staying medial to the middle enough. It's being pulled out to the side out here. Here's the thing with patellar tracking disorder. That could be the case with a lot of people, and there's research that shows that the patella tracks laterally or is pulled to the side, and that's correlated with pain. But there's a lot of other research that shows the exact opposite, in which the patella doesn't track to the outside and there's pain, or the patella does track laterally and there's no pain. So what's going on here? Well, there's no one single cause of anybody's knee pain. The reason why is because a lot of different factors influence how the knees react to movement or the different stresses that go through the knees depending on how you move. So if we look at the body, everything is connected. How my feet and my ankles function is gonna affect my knees. How my hips function is gonna affect my knees. If I'm bent over to the side here, that's gonna put more weight on this leg and that's gonna affect my knees, okay? so. Because the body is a, a connected kinetic chain, you can't just look at the knees and think that that's all I got to address. You've got to look at the site of the problem, but you've also got to look definitely above and below that joint. Okay, so here are the keys and some exercises that we can use to cover the whole range, the most common different things that affect patellar tract disorder, patellofemoral pain syndrome, chondromalacia patella, basically pain in the knees. First, you want to address the kneecap, the site of the area, the site of the pain itself. So patellar mobilization, very simple. I've got another video on YouTube and I'm going to link to it, but you're just moving the kneecap around in circles, all different directions through its full range. And it's best to do this when you're sitting on the ground so that all of the quads and the hamstrings are relaxed and you can really move that kneecap around. So you can check out that other video right over here, scoot over there, do that technique with me, and then come back here and we'll continue. Next up, we wanna make sure that there's no excessive tension in the muscles around the thighs. Most people focus on vastus lateralis and IT band because the patella is being pulled out to the side, so they figure, okay, these muscles must be tight and pulling it out that way. That could be the case, might not be the case, but if it is the case, then foam rolling the quads and focusing on the IT band is gonna help. But when you're down there, it's a good idea just to foam roll all of the muscles of the thighs and the hips. So I've got another foam rolling routine, follow along routine that you can follow if you don't know, if you've never done foam rolling before, and you can hit that up right over here. Now, let's look at somewhere outside the knees. Feet and ankles. If you are pronating, what's gonna happen is your knee is gonna go collapse to the inside. You're gonna put a valgus stress on the knees. That can look like the patella is gonna pull laterally because when you go medially, you do the valgus posture, the muscles, the IT band out here are stretched a little bit so there's more tension on these muscles and through that IT band. So that could pull that kneecap out to the side. So looking below, if you've got overpronation, that's an issue. If you've got flat feet, that's an issue. 
So one thing that, one concept that you've got to learn about is called metatarsal pressure. And I teach about this extensively through in my lower limb control course, but basically it's the ability to put pressure down through the metatarsals of your foot. So the metatarsals, you think of the ball of your foot, that's one, the metatarsal for the big toe, but each toe has a metatarsal. So being able to put, apply pressure through all of those five metatarsal bones is gonna ensure that the bottom of your feet, the sole of your feet, all those muscles on the plantar aspect of your feet are functioning correctly and active. So a simple technique that we can do first is just to do the metatarsal pressure. So I'm thinking just push down on all five, not just the ball of the foot, but pinky, I guess ring, middle, index toe, and big toe. Metatarsal pressure, okay? Once you know you can do that on both feet or especially the side that's affected if you've got a problem with only one knee. We're gonna go into a split squat. So it's like a stationary lunge, metatarsal pressure up front, okay? And then maintain that metatarsal pressure as you lunge down or squat down and maintain it as you come up. And this is gonna integrate your bottom of the foot muscles, your plantar foot muscles, into this movement pattern so that we get that stability from the ground up. And this is something that is often missed, not addressed when people are working on the knee. They'll go knee and then they'll go up. And they forget to go down because every step you take starts with the foot interacting with the ground, going up the ankle and then into the knee. And if the foot's not working properly, how you gonna, how is your knee going to be functioning properly or how are the forces through the knee going to be aligned? Well, they're not. So we've got to start from the bottom up. Okay, so that's one technique. Another great technique I've got on YouTube already is a functional ankle mobility drill and you can go visit that right here. I'll break that down in full. In, I already break it down in this video, so I don't want to rehash it again. Okay, so check that one out. That's a great technique to get the ankle and the feet moving in all directions. Next up, now let's go up. A technique first to get the glutes working. It's the monster walk with the band. So with the band, you wanna put the band around the arches of your feet, get a little bit of pressure, and you get into a quarter squat position like that. This is going to, and then once you get into that quarter squat position, you're basically doing side steps, very slow, like this. So you look like a, that's why it's called a monster walk. It's perfect timing around Halloween. Okay, the key is to go slow and controlled. So not just flopping, but step out, control it in. Step out, control the leg coming back. Don't just let the band fling your foot back, but step out under control, and control the other step, okay? This is gonna fire up the glutes and the external rotators of the hip. And this helps to counteract this valgus posture of the knees going towards each other when you do things like squat or when you do things like lunge. It's gonna help to get these muscles that counteract that firing in a good pattern. You're in a quarter squat position, so you're training this position where you need that the most. Monster band, monster walk with the band. With this, you can do 10 repetitions in either direction, two to three sets, do it at least twice a week, and that's gonna help to get those glutes online. Okay, next up, this is a great technique for now getting the adductors and the hamstrings involved. So we've already been working the glutes, external rotators of the hip. Now we're gonna get the hamstrings and the adductors involved. And the reason why this is important is because the adductors, if they're not firing properly, what often happens is you just get that big hip shift out to the side whenever you're on one leg, okay? And that's just poor alignment of the hips and the knees and the ankles. And when we have poor alignment, there's always gonna be compensatory issues that prop up over time, they crop up over time, especially if we're doing things like working out, running, any kind of sport where you're doing repetitive motions all the time, 
that's when those issues can really come out. So to get these muscles on, I like to do what I call a walking adductor lunge. What you're gonna do is you're gonna step out to the side, about a 45 degree angle, pretty big step, get down low, and then focusing on this foot, you're gonna pull yourself up to standing. And then big step out, get deep into the lunge, and then pull yourself up to standing, okay? The key here is metatarsal pressure, maintaining that, because when we fire up from the bottom of the feet, that helps to go right up the posterior chain, hamstrings and adductors, adductors can fire up better if we got the bottom of the foot online at the start. So again, you're standing, you take a big step out, 45 degrees, get deep into the lunge, and then putting all the weight on the front foot, metatarsal pressure, pulling myself up to standing. Big step out, metatarsal pressure, pull myself up to standing. That was the floor, that wasn't me. Okay, so the adductor lunge, do six to eight reps per side. Again, two to three sets at least twice a week, and that's gonna help to get the adductors and the hamstrings firing in these movement patterns that we need. So there we have, a, already we've got a bunch of exercises. We've got the patellar mobilization, foam rolling, monster walk, we've got the metatarsal pressure split squat, and the adductor lunge. If you play a sport or you do high intensity workouts, we've gotta to continue to build what we've just programmed into our body into higher strength, higher speed movements. Otherwise, when we get to those movements in the gym, we won't have that transfer from the work that we're building because we're just focusing on jumping high or doing as many burpees as possible in two minutes. So the way that you can do that is you can do, I'm just gonna give you an example. We can use the squat pattern. So body weight squats, you're working up, you implement all the different concepts that you've learned in this video, like metatarsal pressure, like keeping alignment of the knees so you're not caving in there. You work up to 20, sets of 20, 30 repetitions, okay? Once that's pretty easy or through full range, then we get a, a bar on the back or hold a dumbbell in the front and you build the strength. And for strength, you wanna work anywhere from the six to 10 repetition zone and keep increasing the weight to build up the strength in that pattern. Then you go to squat jumps, and you can do the same thing. You start with metatarsal pressure, counter movement, and then jump, and then land in metatarsal pressure. The key here is you're making sure when you land, you're not going into valgus knees, which is very common, especially in females. I see that, I've seen that so many times, female volleyball players in high school, university, when they land, their knees cave in, and it's just an ACL tear waiting to happen. So you're working, the squat jump, metatarsal pressure to get that velocity trained, and then landing, keeping alignment of the knees so they don't cave in or even cave out. You want them aligned straight over the feet. Okay, so that concept, you could apply that, it's basically build endurance, strength, power, and speed, and that's how you take the corrective exercise and make it transfer over to high performance activity sports. Cool? All right. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it's been helpful. And you can, if you have knee pain or patellar tracking disorder, you could take this, these exercises and these concepts and apply them to help you move freely and without pain. So if you did like this, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification thing to get all the videos in the future. And I'll link to some other related content because I go through stuff after on my YouTube channel and see, oh, this might be useful as well. And I'll post that on the end screen there that you can check out if you're so interested. All right. So thanks again. Talk to you next time. Peace.